come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, or if this is the first time that you've joined us, hello. Welcome. Uh, every Saturday night we watch a movie and then we'd sit around the bar, crap, crack open a few beers with crap, with crap <laughs> beers. <laughs> crap we, out a few things. Either we crap open some beers or we drink beer and crap our pants. Uh, who knows? It's, it's, Sometimes it's, we watch crap and drink beer. That's right. <laughs> every Saturday. Time. So, hey, uh, you can do us a great big favor by going over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. And uh, giving us a like or write us a comment. We'll read your comment on the air later in Igor's Mailbag, the segment of our show where we read the mail. Uh, So (laughs) these are the... (laughs) (laughs) I know, this is... uh, Yeah. So who are we? We're going around the table. Holly. Sean. Travis. And I'm Colin. And every week we watch a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the Saturday Night Freak Show luminaries. And tonight it was chosen by Sean. Mm-hmm. What did we watch? 1987's Street Trash. You know who directed this movie? Jim Morrow. You know who he is, Jim Morrow? He is, uh, he directs stuff, but he's also a cinematographer. Yeah. And a camera operator on tons of stuff. Yeah. Friday what? the 13th, part eight, steady cam operator. Wow, the worst one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he also did this? like Terminator Two. I mean, like he did like he, done... cam. he did steady cam on this actually. Yeah, yeah I'm not surprised. But uh, Titanic, uh, X Men, uh, TV shows. Yeah, uh, Razor. Trashy movies. Everything. Like a lot of people start. Yeah, that's where everybody gets their movies. start. Brian Singer was a, a grip on this movie. Yeah. On Street Trash. Was this like uh, so? This was Moreau's first movie, I assume. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> was it the he only thing he directed? It. No, no, he uh, directed. Uh, uh, well, filter just, time. Yeah, he directed like eight other movies, but okay. not Yikes. nothing. All right, or no, not even other movies. Like maybe one other movie and mostly television. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Rush Hour TV series, Longmire and whatnot. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's still going. I mean, wow that there was a Rush Hour. TV <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there was. It's, it's no longer with us. May it rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. So this is. Uh, so how did you first hear of this movie? Because uh, we're we're coming to understand that there is a cult following there, for Street Trash. Yes, I mean otherwise, it's, why would they give it a special on, edition Blu-ray release? No, the my buddy I work with, David. He uh, in the middle of the day looked over me and said very calmly, "Hey, have you seen Street Trash?" And I was like, "No, I have not. I have not heard of this." And he's like, "All right." And then he showed me the trailer, and I was like, "I have to see this now," <laughs> and I'm sure it's my next pick. Because, and how it is described on IMDb is uh, a bunch of bums drink expired booze and melt in the streets. This is what I've heard about this movie all of these years. Dude, I've like, I mean, growing up in the horror section, I mean, it's been sitting there, right? A Mm. guy melting in a toilet and you're like, the fuck? There's like, this cannot be good. It just can't be. Just based on like, I consider myself a kind of a trauma fan. I wouldn't necessarily say I like necessarily like a huge trauma fan because I only like their first like three, four films really. But, Mm. uh. Which were also from this era, 87, 85, yeah. 87, or whatever. So when I read about this back in the day, it's like, ah, fuck, I just can't even bring myself to It's like, <laughs> it doesn't sound horrifying. It just sounds like, I have bombs, drink, booze, whatever. You know? See, based on that synopsis, I'm like, yeah, sign me yeah, up. Exactly. <laughs> but have you seen the stuff? Have you seen it's like I had, so many movies? That's I what I keep nothing, thinking yeah. about the stuff. Because and this, the stuff yeah. has a bunch of people melting on the cover because mm-hmm. you know, yeah. they stuff. drink uh, or they eat yeah, it's they like yogurt, yogurt, alien yogurt right, or whatever. Right. whatever. Fuck, I don't even say what yeah. it is. It just comes out of the ground. Well, this is like a distinctly like New York brand of. Uh, I guess the other thing that I always heard of Street tra- Trash, aside from, you know, the, the it, that it was a gore film. Like, mm. this is one of the, like, extreme gore movies of the mid to late 80s. Mm. And they lied. Color- <laughs> well, Color- there's a little disappointment that you're hearing yeah. in our voices, folks, because as we get oh. to talking about this, it's like the, the setup, what we were sold on this movie is not necessarily the movie that we got. Right. No, 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 no. Yeah, the meat's a little brown around the edges of this movie. Yeah, there are uh, some, I don't know, would you call them extreme gore effects? Maybe we should talk about the gore first, because that is a, probably I the mean, highlight of the movie. There's really only, like, mm, <clears throat> one main... I mean, the reason the fucking toilet melting guys on the cover is because that's your main, like, special effect. Right, and it's your introduction like, to what happens when you drink the, uh, the booze. I'm sorry, what's the uh, the lady that did uh, the special effects? Her name is Jennifer 
Anna Saul or something. Like, uh, to be honest with you, I had never heard her name uh, prior. Jennifer to Aspinall. Aspinall. Yeah, but apparently now she does like you know makeup for like Mad TV and Saturday Night Live and you know. That's why like that. I never went to Tom Savini School of Makeup Effects because it's like let's see, it's like 1997 or something. Like everything's going computer. Right. If yeah. you go to school to do makeup, you're going to be doing makeup. You're going to be doing yeah. eyeliner. Yeah. Bucket, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. But Black I think. Eyes. <laughs> because of this, she was like a star yeah. in like the Fangoria for the Fangoria crowd I for a imagine. period of time. Because she'd also worked on the original Toxic Avenger. Mm. So she's one of the, I mean, it's interesting. She's one of the only that I know of like females who do in the industry who do, you know, like the prosthetic gore makeup and stuff like that. Who is, you know, right. of any note. At least to him. Yeah. And of any note to a major degree. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I was supposed to, the, the, the two major scenes was the first bone that dies in the toilet and our final bad guy getting his like head blown off or whatever. It was well, there's also like the, the what's his name? Wheezy who, who drinks it and melts against the wall. Yeah. yeah. And then the fat guy hefty. Which, yeah. It uh, explodes. Explodes. Yeah. But that was even like, it was like, come on, if you've seen Monty Python's meaning of life, it's like, I've seen a right, exploding yeah. guy yeah. a little bit better. Even, yeah. you know, not that, you know, well, I mean, of course, Mike Python, I'm sure, had more money, but mm. it seems like what makes this distinct visually, like whenever I've seen like a, a screen grab or whatever from Street Trash, is that it's not so much, it's gory and oozy and pussy and, you know, all this, but it's not bloody. Like they don't no, bleed, they, multicolored. They, they bleed like neon blue or yellow purple. or, you know, purple. Each one is a different like, color for yeah, some reason. Yeah. And it's like, Reds, it's like goopy, right like, like there's like, Ooze? It's it's not it's, blood it's like at all. The, I mean, that's like the trauma thing, right? Like to have a have like a blotter or whatever that yeah. can like expand. You have like mm-hmm. alka seltzer or some sort of thing yeah. that can like ooze out. And yeah, like yeah. it's busy and mm-hmm. you just do that a lot. <laughs> you just <laughs> a have a lot out of people's ears and yep. like have tubes running. Yeah, tubes run up to the hairline, like, have it squirting out of there, out of the shoes and everything. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Oh yeah, the 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 best special effect in the world for all you independent filmmakers is just dropping jello down your pant leg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the fucking shoes like, oh, oh my God, I'm melting so much if you can only look up here. <laughs> Which is anybody yep. seen the incredible uh, melting man? Yeah, a long oh, no. time ago. That, that was Rick like, Baker, I think, like early on did that. That, that yeah. seems like that would be the ultimate like melting, uh, like that sort of special effect of the 80s. Right, yeah. I know I've melting. seen it once, but I don't fucking remember it. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was not a very good movie. Like, guy yeah. comes back from space and then slowly melts, melts over the course of the movie. But, I mean, like, a good one, you know, you think of, like, Fright Night or something, yeah. where, you know, the guy yeah. melts on the stairs. You For know. sure. Yeah. This is wonderful. really good editing, right? Cause yes. This, yeah. You know, they do some kind of, I call it the Wolfman editing, right? We're like, we're at this stage. Oh, now we're already over here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie was experimental at best. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what's so weird about this fucking movie. That's okay. Like, per- this is my. I have no facts about. Like, I think this was funded by the mob because the production value is pretty good. Cameras, yeah, look really good. Lots Lighting of steady cam. Really good. Lots of steady cam. Yeah, but everything else around that is like a trauma movie. You know, the type of acting. Uh, the, as the in, sound. like, non-acting, basically. Yeah. Right. I mean, I seriously thought in this movie that they had a, hired a cast of real bums. Oh, my God. Like, I, you could tell me, like, I don't even want to know if they were <laughs> actors. That's what I'm going to my grave thinking. Oh, that no. They hired real bums yeah. for most of the uh, most of the, the supporting cast of this movie. Yeah. Quite well, possibly. Just was... based on the teeth. Yeah. yeah. Just basing <laughs> yeah. that on the teeth. Yeah, right? <laughs> or the loss of limbs or whatever yeah. you got. Oh, yeah, because like, just the guy with no hands at the beginning of the movie smoking. Yeah. Yeah. The guy with no legs in the in yeah, the store. Right it, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like, what's this guy trying to tell us about bums, right? Because that's what you're looking for in these type of movies. You're looking for either this is going to be a statement against like chem- the chemical industry or you know, nuclear uh corporation, whatever right. the fuck. You're looking for your angle, right? All yeah. these were kind of they I was- had a yeah, I was like missing that at the beginning because I mean I guess we haven't said it for the audience, but this beer or sorry, it's wine, right? Yeah, that viper actually, wine. Yeah, I guess so. The, yeah, I like I thought it was some kind of you know prior to seeing the movie that it was going to be some kind of like, toxic. We tie-in. accidentally dump a toxic thing and the guy's like, <laughs> "What do I do? I don't know." Or some guy just finds something. But yeah, no, it's but, just a dude. But that Ed finds just finds a, a crate of old booze in a in a. Uh, like a a crawl space yeah. in the basement of his liquor store. store. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. Old, it's expired. Like, rah, 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 rah. We'll sell to the bums. Yeah. They always come sell in real good for a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
So that's it. So like, what is the statement that they're trying to make? Well, at first, there? the statement is, it's, well, nothing really. That's what's so fucking weird about this movie. Mm. It's like, because it's almost like they only use that for the gore scenes. The real statement of the movie at first is kind of this like, Vietnam vets have been so fucked up that they're bums, right? The, our main bad guy, he's like King Bum, right? Bronson. His name is a, a Bronson. Yeah. Bronson. <laughs> well, you want a tough guy name in the 80s, yeah, well, right? Sure. Bronson. Bronson's it, dude. Like, yeah. Bronson. And, you know, so this is some dude that, you know, of course, got back from Vietnam and he's crazy and he's creating his little army of bums or whatever. And I kind of thought, well, here's our story. Here's our story. King Bum is going to have whatever. And then we have two runaway brothers whose dad was so fucked up coming back from Vietnam that, I don't know, they're just like, we gotta get out of here, kid. Like, And yeah. they run away. And become bums. And this is what's confusing about this movie, because at first I'm like, what fucking period does this take place in? Because the kid is wearing hippie clothes. I'm like, so did he steal his dad's hippie clothes? I, think it's I mean, it's like just, it's the generation before when they got rid of all their clothes, like that's what's available in the yeah, in fucking bums, dumpsters they... and everything. So they're, they're getting like last, last generation's clothing and yeah. everything. And that's what I, they have yeah, to I live in. So I guess that's a good idea, but he's the only guy really dressed in like, I mean, he's got a fucking like purple. I mean, he looks like a hippie. Yeah. He he's does. got a, yeah, he's a, a like dangly, what, beard uh, hair. Uh, yeah. The, oh yeah. The, yeah. On, on the fucking, nice leather like, jacket. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like he's the, the hipster, the hipster bum. That's what I was thinking at first. It's like hipster, <laughs> yeah. hipster or hobo. Who will yeah, also yeah, yeah. at some point it'll be interchangeable hipster hobo or uh, Fred. I think is his name. That way I was so even yeah, sure. Because totally we need like, like four main characters in the first. Like it was like we don't follow anybody. We don't really hear their stories for the first bit. They're trying to build one of these like communal stories, right? Like yeah. here's the bombs, right? right. But you don't fucking find out shit about nothing until just one of these random victim bums comes in. He's like, you think you're better than me? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell you, and then you know it. Or what does he say? Uh, yeah, <laughs> You'll know the ting. <laughs> you know the ting. You, you know the, the ting. ting. Yeah. But yeah, he's but like, I, tell oh, you I the lost thing. it all on a horse ready. I didn't know. Like, I, I bet, bet it all. My wife. I bet my kid. I like yeah. that. That was a good This is the dialogue. suit I wore to my wedding. <laughs> Yeah. But I guess oh, that shit. is the the thing in the movie, right? That that was unexpected. Like I thought it was going to be, you know, the main major driving force of this was going to be this, you know, toxic booze killing all these right. people. And where did the toxic right. booze come from? And the what's toxic killing booze all the bombs? Turn somebody into a super raging toxic, you know, monster no. or a bunch of them, and we're going to have to eventually uh, have the standoff. A but zombie th- army of half melted oh, bombs. That right. Makes, oh. awesome. But that makes too much sense, Colin. But well, it, it takes too much money. It doesn't do that at all. No. That is not. This movie. One person I'm copywriting melts, that zombie no army of half melted hour. bums. <laughs> 2006 and the second Africa. person melting, all they did for special effects really is have like the toe sticking out through the shoe right. and having it pop. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it was just like dropping the, goo- the ooze was just dropping on the street. That way you could have a joke of and a guy it, getting it dropped in his face. It and, drops yeah. onto the face of the writer producer, who's a guy named Roy Frumkus. Frum- who, oh, is that Frumkus? Yeah. Frumkus. So he has <laughs> he has a name in the Damn horror it, world because he did before it was chic to do this kind of thing. He followed George Romero around on the set of Dawn of the Dead and, mm. and made a movie called Document oh, no of the Dead. Oh, shit. did he do that? That's yeah. Oh. Okay. yeah, it was like one of the first, I think, it's where you get really the good. insight into the director's, you know, process, yeah. you know, yeah, like on the set kind of. Yeah, yeah. I pass that around. I uh, scrolled past that on Netflix. I'm going to have to get oh, watch. Awesome. Yeah, yeah it's no, really it's pretty good. good. You know, I mean, as far they now they do it all the time. Sure. There's like documentaries right, on Right, but that wasn't a time. thing. Yeah. Right. spend like In that amount of time. Yeah, like do that. Hours or something like that. It's a long documentary. Damn. There's been <laughs> several cuts of it, yeah. So I think that's where he, and now he's like a professor. I think he teaches film somewhere in New York, you know. But I, I don't know, like, <laughs> if he's course. got credits beyond. You can't do TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got like, hey, I've got some experience. I made street trash. Yeah. <laughs> He sure. said uh, he said when he wrote this movie that he wrote it to offend uh, something to offend every uh, somebody on every quadrant. So he was pretty much going after everybody. In the yeah. okay, I don't care. So I would actually believe that. Yeah, because, because so that's I, that was, he said that was his purpose. He's like, but they and they wrote it, but the the younger generation like saw it and like loved it and took it as like an attack on like you know people that didn't like it and what have you. So it was... Uh, dirty bombs? Because it's not well, really no. nice to bombs. Or, well, no, but the whole... Mo- but, like, Asian The people, whole movie like, it's, it's- is depicting people in general as complete trash. Like, you... The bums, obviously, like, derelicts, the gangsters, the, mob, yeah. the, the business owners, all of them. Like, not one person is portrayed in a good way in this movie. Everyone's, yeah. everyone's disgusting, everyone's a whore, everyone is just awful. Or a rapist, yeah. or a, yeah. a it's, thief, or, like, you know, like... They're portraying no everyone people. as an animal. Except because they the even, young kids. 
I mean, even then, he even then his brother's like she's basically your mother, and you want to fuck her. Like he's uh, telling him everyone in this movie is portrayed as well, almost like an animal. Stupid, like eighteen year old brother made his like nine year old brother run away with them. Or yeah, like, come on, kid, dad's too crazy. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean he suffered like a trap. No, we gotta get out of here. He sucks. <laughs> yeah, like, people are, like. <laughs> Their characters even growl in this movie. Like it's to that extent that everyone is supposed to be an animal. And that's what I took from it. I mean, that's is what it I just get like from a, trauma movies, right? Everything's fucking. That's why I said earlier. I think it's like a specific brand of New York filmmaking, especially yeah. from that era. Because well, I mean, we watch Bad Taste or not Bad Taste. Sorry, uh, uh, Basket Case. And it has like a similar <laughs> feel to. It. I was gonna say this movie's made in bad taste, but uh, you know, I mean, it has. A, it's like an. It's like an. It's like an irony. It's like sarcasm in a weird way. It's you know, it's saying this is the almost the upteenth degree of what we actually see. Right? It's a yeah. cartoon. It's a fucking cartoon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything's exaggerated to like yeah. the tenth well, yeah. degree. Like, like you yeah, you don't just you don't just lust after women. You'll fuck dead corpses. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's to that point. Yeah. Which was the uh, mayor of Toxic Avenger and the uh, owner of the nuclear site in um, Class of Newcomb High. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. the owner of a uh, junkyard where a lot of this movie takes place. It's like you know. They've got all these spare parts, and there's like a tire village, and all the right. hobos <laughs> live there. Which and I, which I personally loved the uh, the car entrance to the tire. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got a tire apartment. The, the I like side that. Of the car like to get into the little. I always apartment. found that pretty cool. And that's where most <laughs> like a Ninja of the, Turtle thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's where most of the hobos hang out, and it, that's where this character Bronson like presides over, like he's the lord of this era, mm-hmm. he, or this area. He has these uh, flashbacks. I mean, this movie oh, is, oh. it's random, right? Woo. But he has these flashbacks where he sees the Viet Cong as vampires coming to get him, uh, where he has a, uh, a knife made out of a, what was femur it? a femur. femur. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's just portrayed as, I think they said, like, he came back from the war, he was discharged uh, with a section eight, so he's right. crazy. He, was, uh, and he ends up homeless, and he yeah. is. It turns out like the most defined character I think in the movie, because the rest of it were split up amongst this like group of I don't know what six oh to twelve Dude, characters. Every scene was introducing a new, a brand new character. Every fucking scene was like, "Hey, now who's this guy? Oh, what are you doing? Hey, uh, even people that would not even come in for the rest of the movie, they still had to have their own specific scenes." Now, what do you think is the point of that? I mean, why would you make a movie where you're just going to continually introduce, like, new characters all the time? You're not following, like, one specific plot. Mm-hmm. The, the the synopsis on the back of the box becomes, like, this kind of thing in the very background that's being investigated I mean, by this muscle-bound make, cop. You're trying yeah. to make, like, a Rocky movie, right? Rocky, okay, like, you start off with Rocky, and then he goes to the bar. He talks to he talks to the bartender, right? You know him and the bartender have, like, an, something of a friendship, right? You don't really hear from the bartender the rest of the movie, right? They're just establishing a, once again, like a community thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Even well, though this movie's not good at it. <laughs> well, was it successful, I guess, no. at doing that? Because we're like, aware of, like, a, a large... Like, it built, like, its own little insular world, yeah. I guess, but right? nobody was really that connected to anybody. Like, I would understand it if Bronson... Like, right from the get-go, if our, like, 18-year-old dressed like a hippie bomb was either... I mean, we do see him try to, like, steal money for, I guess, Bronson. And, like, it takes, like, 40 minutes before Bronson's even like, My $20! And then, like, beats him up for it. But it's like, there should be almost like a, I'm trying to prove something to this Bronson kid. And then, like, this fucking, uh, like, Asian lady that works there is trying to help his younger brother. There should have been almost like a, she's trying to get them out of there. Like, he's too young to be, you know, or some fucking thing. This movie just didn't (laughs) want to have a point except for the, just kind of like the Apocalypse Now type of fucking, like, Everything's crazy in the yeah, end times. Crazy. Is that what it's saying? It's like I think. Well, to me personally, but I take kind of because all the bums are like offense to anybody that goes to wars. I, you're crazy. Our dad came back crazy. Bronson came back crazy. If you go to war, you'll be crazy. But you know, but it's, it's these are liberal. Films. I mean, it feels, it feels so. more like Friday to me, where it's kind of just the a, a day in the life of people hanging out in this neighborhood. But that two characters that you've stuck with and you know their world. This was right. just like we're going here, we're going here, we're going here, we're going like first we're starting off with the hippie. He steals two dollars. He has an adventure. Like he runs away from everybody. Like he does. That that opening was like was that say, was on its 
Oh, the opening like, that was going. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, that was... Uh, I can't even recall. Like, he steals... Well, this is during the dollars. opening credits. Yeah. I mean, while the credit, the whole credit sequence manages to pack in because uh, of what he steals. A chase scene, like a, chase scene, a fight scene, car the, crash, uh, nudity. The bartender yeah. guy. Oh yeah, he yeah, goes yeah. into a burning apartment, and there's people fucking, and they're just they're not worried. They're like they're already close to the bottom floor. They still got we still got time to finish. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's up there. <laughs> but it's just like the fact that they would have like a, I mean, because obviously this movie's on a limited budget, but I mean the stunt work of you know like there's a car crash right at the very beginning they're they're trying to i think arrest your attention yeah. early on in this movie by having a lot of stuff happening yeah. where it's like i guess i expected and again maybe this is where the movie's defi- intentionally trying to defy your expectations but like i thought by the end of that credit sequence there would have been some type of closure to you know whatever was happening there you know right, the guy that. stolen the money and like this is yeah, gonna end up he's doing it for the bronson guy but he really doesn't have any relation to bronson in this whole movie no he's off i don't even fucking know what he's doing trying to he's just like he's oh, being dude angry stole my bottle of viper and we see that that guy drink it and flush get flushed down the toilet mm-hmm which and is just supposed to be like outrageous. I mean, that's you know your opening. Well, it's a kill, I guess. You know, yeah, well, sure. Death the, the death, yeah. But it's supposed to be like your attention grabbing. Like, look what we're doing with this movie. And I mean, I think it works in that level. You know, I mean, it's gooey, and you know, it's like, oh, look at what they're doing there. It's you know, professionally yeah, done for that budget level. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there's no, but it doesn't do anything to the story. It doesn't affect the story forever. They they introduce a cop character. Who like they find it, I guess. And they're just like a serial killer. It's like really a serial killer's melting people. <laughs> right. Well, I almost got the impression real. that like, the, like whatever, the, whatever the cops were investigating was taking place like off screen in some circumstances. Well, like there's a side plot where there's a well, I get, I was assuming that she was a hooker. Oh. That was dating the, uh, the we find out. I mean, I guess I didn't understand the relationships. At initially, and this kind of came to me as the oh, movie unfolded. Fuck. But I this didn't get girl that was that right now, <laughs> right? But, but I was think, thinking, how does the Italian mobster fit into the story? Right, right I yeah, I know. That's why I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, that was his girlfriend. I because I just thought she was a hooker on the street. But no, she was the girlfriend, and then of the mobster of the mobster. Yeah, yeah. that's why he was pissed off and like but wanted did to they find. Say that? They did. They do say that when he comes out, he's like, "Did you see her? The woman that was here with me tonight. Did you see her?" Yeah, and then went away with yeah. this other guy, and yeah. then that's why they're in the police station. Because I'm like, why are the doorman and the mob guy in the police station? It's like, oh, because they're talking about they found her body. That's the, the dead body. That's the that dead body of the up. fat guy, which I didn't get the first time. I didn't yeah, realize that was her. These yeah. Don't I mean? Yeah, they may say it later or blah blah blah. They but just it doesn't all... connect. A bum. All you see is a bum wanders into a fucking alley and there's a whore puking, and then she's drunk enough that she's like, "Let's fuck." She might have said his name, right, Bobby or some shit. No, she kept Eric. Calling she keeps Nikki. calling him Eric or Nikki. Yeah, Nikki. Yeah, Nikki. Nikki. But his real name's Fred. So, so we're like, so "What's the his bum name?" I don't know. Is just like. Dude, I'm gonna fuck this drunk chick. Well, she's calling she's him Nicky because that's the gangster that's thing. The gangster he's thing. Nick, uh, he's uh, Nick the, the Dick, remember? Yeah, Nick but, the Dick. Yeah, but we hadn't met him yet. Well, I know, I know. Yeah, this but is what later I'm on, about, yeah. But I'm talking about the scene in itself. He meets the drunken whore. He just goes to fuck her. A bunch of bombs like jack off, looking at her. Then they steal her and just take off with her. One and of then us. Then you get introduced to Nick or the mob boss, and yeah, I didn't yeah. connect them at all. Yeah. Well, it was it was right after they walked away when he comes out and he talks to the doorman. Right, but then nobody he says, says he's Nikki. He just like, says, we don't. But he says who that says he... me that girl? I didn't know it was that fucking girl. How was I supposed to know? He said that she was outside. He said the girl that I was with tonight was outside. We didn't see him with a. We just oh. saw a girl puking. I got that. I know, that but yeah, I, but I didn't she get was it the one. Later. I guess I wasn't. I got that he was looking for that girl, but right. I was yeah. like, I still, yeah. yeah. When was, I talk about a movie, I'm talking about the way it's edited, the way the story's told for you to link this, to link that, and this fucking movie's horrible at No, they introduce the information after they do something that should make sense for you to know and it. since every new character is a forgettable and doesn't have mm-hmm. anything to do with the rest of the story, you're just assuming it's another character. I don't need to know. This is just somebody that's going to get fucked or raped or, like, dragged off or, like... God forbid, Mel. <laughs> yeah, there was. It did get to a point where it was more like, well, this person's either someone's going to rape them or something or other, rather than have them melt. It like it did melting. get to that point. It was, it was like really it Jesus. It was yeah. really rapey. It did get like for that middle chunk. It was like really rapey. I'm just like, can we just well, get back to melting the people? Fucking, uh, the 
tossing the dick around. <laughs> oh, the hot, the hot <laughs> potato with I the severed penis? Oh, my scene. God. Dude, someone told me about that scene in elementary school. I'm like, no way. I don't give a fuck. This guy is just talking shit. I mean, but what do bums do all day? And then there's your answer. Yeah, it is the weirdest thing that uh, I think that is where the movie. Well, I mean, it, it, I think Can it you gets pinpoint its, it. Is it does it hit its <laughs> lowest point either when they they the gang? Well, you don't we don't see it, but there's the intention that they're gonna gang rape this woman. Yeah, or that then there's the guy like, like Jesus. The guy has sex with the, her corpse. That I mean, that, you know, That's I mean, it, it's aiming for this kind of low. like tastelessness. It in, was in its in its outrageousness. It's going to make a name for itself as it's being punk, like, right? These yeah, are, right. These are punk horror, movies. and that's these how are, it was embraced as something punk. Anarchist. Like they, right? And they, they didn't necessarily. Right they do. They didn't. Do, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they didn't. They said they didn't necessarily make it that way, but it was like adopted as punk as just something. Well, how like was that. it made? I mean, yeah, you say like it's did. a satire <laughs> of what? I guess that's what maybe. I mean, we're supposed to apply our film criticism heads to this and say like, well, yeah. so what is you know? Are we supposed to? Or, yeah, well, I mean, that's right, what we're going to do. It, it but paints the bums <laughs> as, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, like, I guess, humanity, a variety of different people or personality types and, you know, with different morals, you know, you can't paint each one the same way. But they're all basically in this movie. I think everyone, as Holly pointed out, is a degenerate in Except some like way. Whole, no, the black guy is a degenerate only to people he doesn't know. Right. He's friends with his. He's friends with the... Oh, the guy who goes and robs the... But he'll rob from a store. Right, you know? right, right. Because he, I... Like, in the end, when he takes the bottle from the... I was like, is this fucking dude going to steal the Viper from his buddy? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. just the way this movie goes. Like, right. everybody just steals shit from people, and they're like, sorry about that, or I got that. Or they do chase each other. Everybody's just yeah. chasing each other this whole movie. With the steady cam. Like, and the camera dollars? operator's chasing yeah. them with the steady cam all yeah. the time. I mean, it has that kind of, like, dizzying... I think what Steadicam was around from what I mean they you used it in it the like Shining and <laughs> <laughs> yeah because there was a couple times I think the very yeah. first shot of the movie races across like a street or down a street across a parking lot you know and then into a uh, sign a liquor sign yeah. on the fr- like like it's going to go hit right oh into no it. right yeah. into it then it cuts and you're like and what the hell it is goes that like inside. an intention declaration yeah. of intention but it gonna- has to be because they do it later on when they're in the liquor store too because they just go into a dark corner and then you're in the basement with Ed the guy who owns the liquor right, store yeah so they that's got to be intentional they're just going cuts. into stuff they're just like let's get it into this get into black and then cut to it so yeah they're constantly was, running into shit it was just possibly innovative at the time in 1987 because i remember a review of highlander which came out in 1986 where like the critics would complain about the dizzying use of stylistic camera stuff mm. so i think the idea that we were you know moving the camera around freely and you know running after people and stuff with a steady cam was still at that point like a a newish new thing, idea yeah. mm. even though you'd seen it and stuff like like i said the shining or halloween or you know right but we've yeah. seen it way more today than they would have seen it back then yeah. so yeah. they're just still that's like why ah! that's why i'm saying this movie is so experimental with everything it's just like this is so random especially it's for so a bunch random. of first it seems yeah. first time filmmakers i'm mean, sure there's some veterans yeah. who have like worked on trauma stuff that seem to have come well, over well, to well, this well, 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 right well, but it seems like better very first time they, well they still vet, yeah, right, like, yeah. they still I, come out like they've never acted in their life very loosely but uh, yeah, definitely, especially by yeah. Yeah. filmmakers, experimental. <laughs> Very much. The camera yes. work, it's like, let's try this. It's like, let's, they have this whole style, and then all of a sudden, whoa, weird angle. Like, it's right. just When really... the guy's white, when the guy's melting, they just start at one end of the building and then slightly move over to the oh, left. Yeah. And they do that, like, five well, times. It's, it's supposed like, to yeah. be, like, the echo of his screaming, right? right just, but they're uh, too, like, they don't uh, want to just, like, cut here and right. have birds take off or something. Cut <laughs> right, here. it's like, we so have no birds, what do we do? It's like, oh, well, that was boring. Like, it would have been more exciting just to cut to a different location. Right, right. It's like... No, nope, and then there's time, there's one when the when the um, the store owner is melting when there's like a 360 shot like what was yeah, that? Yeah, it's like over yeah. right, they're just head like, over heels which kind of yeah. Like the the on a gyro camera sideways and yeah. just turned it. What Why? it was you, when you don't have special <laughs> effects because that was just like orange shit running guys like yeah. he wasn't like it didn't look like a lot of prosthetics no yeah. like. So that's why they all the cameras moving around is because the movie has nothing going on except for chases. So it's like we got to do as much with the fucking camera to make people feel like they're fucking involved in something, like disoriented. Even though yeah. there's no story to really, because usually movies have like goals or like something A people plot. are looking for. <laughs> Yeah, things you know, they like, want to do directions. Like I always expected the bomb to see the cop looking at the melted guy and be like, "What happened? He had that viper. I better chase." Right. Yeah. I expected yeah. a goal. You're right. 
Well, yeah. everybody has like there's little there's characters. There's many ones, ones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The the you know for instance the the Italian restaurant owner wants to find the uh, uh, what was his, his goal? His his girlfriend. Find his woman. No, but he, he, he so wanted like to the doorman that gets yeah. like involved. The doorman, who's the no. best part. Okay, so the doorman gotta... and the restaurant owner. We need to talk about the them. The restaurant owner was uh, what Tim or what's Tony Tim? Tony Darrow? Darrow? Tony Darrow. Tim, Tony Darrow. Oh, something like that. Yeah, he's so done a lot of stuff. Of but yeah, he was stuff. who sang the fucking ending song to this movie, and it was glorious. It was, well, it was glorious. the only <laughs> this is the only song they played when he was on screen glorious. because it was like his version of uh, My Way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. they had to do their own like public domain version of My Way. So it's like fuck, we'll just have this guy. It sing is yeah. fucking hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's like narrating his oh, entire. Great. It is. It's like yeah. starting. It's doing his arc from the movie and yeah. then finishing him with him melting in the song. It's, like, it's great. Yeah. He's like, "What? I'm dripping!" It's like it's it's hilarious. It's surprising <laughs> that it came from this movie. Well, it's almost it's almost as if well, they just needed somebody for the doorman and the restaurant owner, and they just happened to get like the two like best actors for their whole movie, and they're like, "Fuck it, let's just film more scenes with like, these right. guys." Because it's like <laughs> they're like, they have "Finally, we have chemistry." Yeah. Like, they yeah. Everything with the mob. It has fucking nothing to do with fucking nothing we could just see that whore get killed and we would have assumed she was just a drunk prostitute or something like yeah, that yeah i did at first I we did. all thought that I mean, we yeah. did we're just yeah. like oh. but then the even i mean i guess what you're supposed to assume that the cop is kind of getting information i you're supposed to assume i don't know but he runs into scenes for haphazardly for no reason like when oh, they yeah. talk when like... they talk to the doorman and the mob guy in the police station the next scene is him running into the junkyard yeah. and be like, the hey, yeah. there's a hit out on the guy who, well, who he took the girl. The he does, because he's going to warn the bum? Like, he, him and him are friends? This is where I was kind of, yeah, this is where I was talking very, about earlier. Right. I don't understand why I feel like they were doing what they were doing. I feel like they're doing. friends. It's like, hey, I'm coming to warn you. I yeah. don't know why, but I'm coming to tell you the hit's out on the guy who took the girl. And then, oh, that's why the hit was out. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very because I remember the scene where the guy's menaced in the bathroom by this hoodlum, and yeah. it's like, why he was he there? To, see, I thought in a great he was suit, the girl's he's... boyfriend because he's like, you took the girl, and I didn't realize until the cop like rolls down his window and the and the guy's like, fuck you, cop or whatever. He throws like, his BB oh, gun back at him. Was his guy. Yeah. yeah, the BB gun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But the yeah. cop, so the cop was so actually, he's, he's, this is the story, folks. This is the movie. It's not about bums melting. It's about like a bum picks up a hooker that happens to be a restaurant owner's girlfriend. And they just, what, run around in circles chasing each other in other scenes not involved with each other. And we say to ourselves, well, how does this connect with the main antagonist, uh, the, the Bronson guy? And the answer is we don't really know because in the know. end, I mean. Because it you happens know, in his junkyard. Yeah. That's I, I guess you, the owner of the like junkyard. A, yeah, that was well, just I don't know if it's because all these like anti-Vietnam movies were so popular at the time. You know, the platoon. The, the I don't know if they were just trying to whip in. You know, it's something movie makers do, right? Like, hey, what's popular right now? Unicorns and butterflies. All right, unicorns and butterfly. Like, I mean, they just look at a poster and say, like, this is selling. We got to put our crazy Vietnam guy in there, Rambo, fucking, you know, whatever the hell. But dude. usually those movies, I guess this is where I'm seeing like a distinction, and maybe this is answered by something that Sean said earlier, but usually in those movies, even though the, the films are anti war anti-vietnam they're usually pro the vietnam veteran you know even mm. rambo to Typically, the extent yeah. that it did at the end you know tries to articulate the plight of the soldier coming home or you know whatever or what they've experienced he ends there. Up being the hero usually but here it's like you've made your antagonist a vietnam you know a, a crazy yeah you know like these stereotypical Viet, a crazy Vietnam veteran who's like only out to kill the way everyone. all the hippies did, you know, goop killers. Yeah. Oh, did, 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 he like, kills the way like in the I think veterans. almost in the the second scene that we we see him in for no apparent reason he pulls a guy like there's these bums that like wash car windows and stuff like <laughs> you stop apparently in New York City. Oh yeah. Feet. You, yeah, you stop your car and bums will swarm your vehicle no, trying no, to collect some money to clean, clean your car. Don't breathe on the car. <clears throat> and he like just randomly yanks this guy out of a car and like kills him, like oh. on the in broad daylight. 
at the beginning of the movie. That guy's like, conversation is like, I, uh, I, I used, I went, uh, used to shoot one of those, uh, the one of those <laughs> yeah. you guys were talking about. Those are, those are, that was pretty fun. And then he gets yanked out of the car and his face shoved into the windshield. Which is like, another whoa. one of those edits where it's just like, like, whoa, oh, he's through the windshield. Like, right, 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 right. nothing else. Like, oh, yeah. I see. So you're just like, oh, I wonder what he did. Oh! Some of the special effects in this were like more like uh, haunted house scenes, right? It's like, well, we set up the gore. <laughs> like, we'll just have to edit to it. Like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> so don't move it. Well, here's my my question or, or that I pose to you guys is like, then are we saying that instead of making a political statement like the other movies do about Vietnam and the veterans? that this is just trying to offend everybody by making the Vietnam veteran a crazy psycho killer. I, I mean, think that's it, part of it. it. It keeps in tone well, with everything movie, else that's in this jacket, movie. Right. Full Metal Jacket does it. Platoon does I mean, that's what all those movies did. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Like, they made them hero. What are you talking about? Every veteran Like movie Rambo. Was, well, Full Metal that's Jacket. Are some. Okay, but yeah. that's... Okay, Rambo, the first Rambo, he was supposed to kill himself. He was not a hero. He was a crazy guy that warred on a... Put, like, he... He had war on a town. That he was not a hero in the first <laughs> Rambo movie. It was only until the... they sold a bunch of movies that were like, "Fuck yeah, he's going back and he's rescuing people." You know, he became a hero <laughs> after the fact. Mm. You know, the first movie was about PTSD. Well, that's also I think True. what Full Metal Jacket is about, right? Yeah. I mean, basically, oh, yeah. these movies yeah. say that you take these, you know, normal everyday yeah. average kids, you put them through this psychological meat grinder, and they come out ruined because of it. And so, like, war is the ruining factor. Yeah. Where this movie doesn't really say that like war i mean well because they're all loose characters i mean you're looking for i mean this is like i think they're trying to do it but once again these guys are not really i've never seen any but i've never seen them actually like go like he is 100 percent like he went to war he's crazy he's comes back he's just gonna kill everyone because like that's all he does he well, kills it's a trauma people. movie or not a trauma uh, movie, but it's uh, a, focused on so much. Sure they does feel they like produce it. flashbacks for this character, pretty like uh, somewhat intricate compared to everybody else in this movie. Or all yeah. the other characters, there's what explosions. They get. There's, there's explosions in the background, <laughs> like it's in like, in your quote unquote war movie where they just have the explosions going off in the background while you're doing shit up front. Like they did that in this movie. Like, yeah. They took the time to go do that. Yeah, there's two. Yeah. There's the vampires. That whole like he left the war, but the war didn't leave. Him, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, man. Is that what we got out of it? I'm not said. entirely sure. Just from watching it, I'm like, I I realized that there were flashbacks, and it yeah. was a chance for them to do some kind of stylistic Vietnam stuff, blue lighting and smoke, and mm. you know, Viet Cong vampires. But I'm like, <laughs> what did I really get to the psychology of Bronson out of those flashbacks? I guess. I mean, this just is crazy. Well, like, just just the crazy war drove him crazy. Uh, yeah. See, I wouldn't even think that much of a deal if the two runaways didn't have their Vietnam story. That's the only reason why I'm like this filmmaker is making a statement because he he's enough to make three characters affected by the Vietnam War in this movie. God knows how many other bums. And I mean, the vets, the bums seems like the, they the, were yeah, the, at the least the veterans of some. They yeah. wear badges. It's like they are saying, well, because it's a fact that fucking. Veterans are the majority of uh, the homeless population. And maybe why, that's why they're all fighting well, they and get having a war. And they can't get fucking jobs. But this is, no, they get demonized because they're crazy from war. No, they get cr- demonized because the media, whatever. We're not talking about this. <laughs> but, but well, we let's look be. at the movie's <laughs> treatment of, like, the New York uh, authority, I guess, like, that, that is yeah. exemplified by these cops. and these you Mickey know, Mouse um, cops. Yeah, literally, well, I mean, literally Mickey Mouse cops. Literally wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt. <laughs> Once again, only one scene. That guy is only his only purpose is to come in and like I'm gonna talk to you for four minutes yeah. because right. you know we have to have a scene right and the, now. And the funny <laughs> corner, the corner was really funny, oh, and he the was corner. there for like two seconds. He's like, hey, wait, you guys it, look a mess. Sitting there this. eating his lunch, like he was <laughs> what funny. What the fuck was that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know. He's like <laughs> he's building <laughs> and he's eating place. sushi rolls. What? Because every corner is always just eating right. nonchalantly. This guy came in last week. Nobody's identified him. I made art. <laughs> yeah. It's just weird. Weird. But it's also saying like that the like they don't seem to have like a moral superiority to mm. the people that they're busting. It's just like oh, this no. is a job that we do, and maybe that is like you know it's just exploitation to the fullest extent, right? Well, I guess uh, you know I, mean, I was just thinking like right? I mean kill I mean everything is just but no I mean the the cop the cop characters oh. they don't yeah. seem to have like a, they're kind of they're in there yeah. with the, like you know 
they're not busting these hookers because it's like prostitution is a wrong thing. It's just like, well, it's you know, what we do. This is the law, so we pick you up and we yeah, take you away. Right. But just they're chummy cops. with them, you know? It's like, right, we know yeah. that this is how it goes, you know, and all that. Uh, and the detective character has to go and... Uh, uh, Sorry, and go to uh, the the tire, whatever the the tire, the t- the tire yeah. castle, yeah, yeah, to like kick out all the bums yeah. and all that stuff. And yeah. it was like, can we talk about the fact that the cops' punishment for the one bum was to shower him and give him fresh clothes? Right, yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. the greatest. I don't know why, but He's it's like, just not like, the ah, shower. he didn't give us our information. <laughs> Clean him up. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a shower, and that's the best. Where the bum, do, I mean, it is like fifteen minutes later where the bum wakes up and he's just like, he looks showered. Like he doesn't know what happened, right? That's why I don't understand. Yeah. He's like, what the showered, fuck? Showered, fresh yeah, clothes, like a drunken like, stupor. That's but... great. You know, it, it almost, I, almost like they they make him like his punishment is to not be one of them anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To not be a bum anymore, which is what they, at this point they're so far gone. That's what they want. Like yeah. this is yeah. theirs. They're part of that this group. To shower know. him and give him fresh clothes is the ultimate punishment for them. Yeah, yeah. and that's I mean, that's funny. And the, the scene before that, like why he has to take a shower, is the only like kind of I guess clue they would have given to why the cops think people are, like a killer is murdering bums because there's these punks that are setting bums on fire with gasoline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apparently. But if, once yeah. again, this is another idea that they don't like. They go bring up anywhere. and then they I mean, You see the scene and you're like, oh shit, I wonder if they're going to connect this to the melting. No, they don't. They're just like, someone's killing bums. Right. And like, they catch it in progress and they're right. like, hey, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, it's. Well, I mean, it, it ends up engineering a scene that so you can get like this muscle bound cop in uh, conflict with Bronson. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, OK, you know, when that actually started, I'm like, this seems like a natural progression of where this movie is going. Mm-hmm. You put the two strong men together and they're going to fight. Right. Uh, it had a surprising outcome, you know, but yeah. but it was then. I don't know. I like sat there going like af- immediately after that, Bronson ends up. Oh, that was where he gets the the wine and he uh, the his girlfriend drinks it That's and then crazy. like he starts chasing the other kid and I'm like the the runaway the, kid the younger one the and younger I'm one. like he's jealous that the younger kid is like is that what was with... happening Did you all get that or yeah, is it just me where I was one, like I, I don't understand scene, why this character is motivated I think to it, go in this there's the one prolonged scene chase scene Bronson is kid. looking at the girl and earlier his in the movie girl goes Oh you want her Huh. Well, you, so I mean, way you guys, earlier in the movie, I think there is another him looking at her as they no, walk. No, you guys the know thing. that his um, one of his flashbacks was a flashback hallucination. He saved her in Viet Cong. That was her. Yeah. The, and then they like started to hook up when they cut back to reality. Oh, is that her? That was yeah, her. I remember yeah. thinking that that was that girl, but I don't know if that's like because that's that's you know he, he that's yeah, but he think that yeah, it was it was a flashback slash hallucination. Or he was bad putting I couldn't tell. He was putting her oh, okay. face <laughs> on somebody from yeah because you see Viet Cong vampires. Right. Oh, yeah. the one who bit his nipple for ten. Yes, minutes. yes, yeah. that's the one. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> That ridiculous. makes more sense. But it, it's yeah. almost, we can almost skip all that and just say he had his eye on her. He did. Like, way, that's yeah. that's what he wanted. And so when his, I mean, it really is, when his girl died, he's just like, no, he's yeah. taking the last one. <laughs> yeah. It was just like an abrupt change of, it was. not motivation. necessarily tone, but yeah, motivation. Yeah. Where yes. like, I couldn't follow yes. the jump. And this happened yeah. a number this of times. This is supposed to be about yeah. fucking me. wine that makes bombs. <laughs> <melt. laughs> but by the time you get to it, you're like, wait a second. So this PTSD King Bomb uh, is going after this young runaway bomb because he is actually taking the girl that is in his crazy PTSD dreams. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I think they know what they're saying about and the cops people in society. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are they saying Because about... they're not doing the horror movie they say they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the message about Until bombs the last then? 10 minutes. Because no it's not like they have sympathy it's just, for it's them. It's just a crazy exactly. world. It's funny. It's just funny. Like Hobo with a shotgun. <laughs> it, it's kind of it's like... It feels Hobo. very much like It kind of felt like they just gun. took whatever angle's the dirtiest and bums. Yeah, for That's sure. It. Whatever's the bummiest. Junkyard, bums, Yeah, what dirty. can we do anything with? <laughs> bums. Yeah. yeah. We don't yeah. need good makeup. We don't need good clothes. We don't need... <laughs> dirty. <laughs> but I mean, we there must have been... That's where I don't know if they spent money on this movie or if it was cheap to make, but the production design, I would say, like... It feels like dirty, scummy. It it's feels grimy. like they shot in real. Like I mean, I'm completely convinced that like that whole uh, auto parts junkyard 
Oh, that's all exists real. exactly like that oh, in yeah. real life. Oh, yeah. With the little tire hut and everything. Oh, yeah. Like, I would be, you no, know, like... No bum would ever make a tire hut. They'd be too tired. <laughs> too tired. I was you just, like, it? sold. I'm like, all these people look real. All of this stuff <laughs> feels real. It's it like, does. It feels dirty. Like, especially like, when the there's a scene in the cop station where... Um, I uh, think the muscle bound cop is just talking to like the dispatcher about some shit and just, you barely see it, but just kind of like the set or, or where they were at. Like I could see it and I've been in places like that before. Just mm-hmm. it's still got all the old wooden fixtures and the everything. Wood, just like, like the I paneling. Can, yeah, yeah. Or just, and you can almost feel the grime that just kind of lives. Yeah. On everything. You're just like, Ooh, I can smell where they're at right now. <laughs> so yeah, I do. That's yeah. It's gotta be real. Like I can't imagine they would have the money to make anything. So they just knew people and just like, well, we and I buy the tire hut because it was made by the brothers, the new bums. They've still got the energy. Uh, <laughs> well, Bronson has made his throne or whatever. Bronson made his throne, I suppose. So that's a basically the only semi, other. Yeah. 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 All right. So, so uh, there's also the, uh, the penis tossing scene. Oh my God. Which we talked about a little yeah. bit, but like it tonally, is it in keeping with the rest of the no. movie? This guy well, like is this guy's, Trying to pee through like a hole in the whatever, uh, whatever the fenders or whatever. Yes. Well, the, yeah, the older brother gets attacked by Bronson and he's about to get killed. And one bum just wakes up and goes, huh? And the size just pee through He that. thinks he's pissing on a wall, but he doesn't know he's pissing through a hole. Right. Onto, onto King Bomb. <laughs> yeah. Who so then King Bomb grabs it and, and cuts it off. off. And then starts throwing it around. And they pl- start playing keep away. Yeah. And then there's yes, kind of like do. a... Rah, 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 rah. Well, it's yeah, just the was... weirdest fucking thing. Like, well, yeah, this... but right before that, there was like this crazy, weird, like, Bugs Bunny bassoon music when they when he was going to, you know, go on necrophilia on that dead yeah. woman. Because it was funny. so and the scene before, <laughs> when the fat you know guy... It's funny, the music's like... Right. <laughs> but even the scene before <laughs> where, like, <laughs> the, <laughs> the fat guy and the Asian woman are, like, yeah. having it out, I'm like... He's I can't tell what we're doing her. here. Like, is he? Is this something that they do like every week, where they just kind of mess around with each other and they're right, just like, yeah. it's almost like bickering back and forth. Yeah. A little more than that, yeah. or is he really trying to do it? And they're just putting this funny music over it, and it's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't know. Is it supposed I, I to be funny tell. to the old pervy old man? It's funny. Uh, yeah. Is it, it is funny. If you watch the Japanese do it in their cartoons, they do make it really hilarious. <laughs> See, I'm hearing a lot of sarcasm in Travis's voice, listener, when he's saying this. <laughs> like, no, no, that's, no that's, I am that's serious. Funny. I, I am serious. Uh, <laughs> Japanese cartoons always have one pervy old man, like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I'm so old, and like, it doesn't even matter who, you know, and they always steal bras and shit like that, whatever. But this is like the American version of that, where we're like, no, we are too far. This right, is like where some we don't cute know. old man that just likes to pinch a butt. Right. You know, this is like, I want to fuck anything. Including a dead person. That's a dead course. person. Yeah. Yeah. Because when he discovers this dead body, I just remember, you know, I mean, I said like the, the music that like plays, you know, you're like, oh, my God, he's found a dead body. And then, like, they start playing this music, and I'm like, what in the fuck? Yeah. And Travis is like, it's because he wants to fuck her. Yeah. And I'm like, sure enough, that is what is actually going yeah, on. I've seen plenty of movies like this. I know what they're going for. Yeah. I recognize that bassoon. I yeah, know what he's yeah. thinking. Yeah, very, the very first wacky. <laughs> wacky stuff. And then they throw the penis around for a while. Yeah, that's, that's just oh, yeah. God. That happened. I feel like I've heard about that scene, too, uh, before, before seeing this movie, but... Just, you know, have to It didn't have, like, a very good ending, though. I mean, like, somehow the so thing he has should have to... caught... Because there's, like, a hey, Hail Mary throw. And right. He, he should have kissed it. Oh, yeah, that would have been but, fucking oh, that, Does the audience yeah, understand exactly. that? The guy, it's like, hysterical. even though he has his dick cut off, is still running around. Like, he's trying. fine. No, like, he's yeah. fine. Seriously? He's going, put it on ice! Put it on ice! <laughs> seriously. This, like a, no, give it back! The ridiculous is... The ridiculous of this scene. I was waiting for someone to catch it in their mouth. Like I, I, was I really was. I, I thought this was really or somebody was. to accidentally like get it in their mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, uh, I mean, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I was waiting yeah. for. Dog picks it up, runs away, gets hit into something, and knocked right. in the air, oh, and whatever. Yeah. The... But once again, this is oh, this whole movie because this they said this movie is based off a short film by some other guy named no, Jim by the same Murrow. guy, Jim Murrow. Yeah, he's oh, the director. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, same guy. But so I figured, so that short film must have just been about a bum buying booze at Mel's. <laughs> and then they're like, right. well, we need an hour and a half, so yeah. let's What can just, we fill this You guys want to fuck around in a junkyard for two yeah. days, see what we come up with? We can, And then they're like, today we'll we'll do Apocalypse Now. Then we'll have two runaway kids. And then we'll have, it's like, every day they did a new story. And then they're like, no, 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 something else. Let's do something else. Yeah. 
it does feel kind of knitted together from well i mean toward the end so it's about like i don't know for all the gore hounds in the audience of which i count myself one of them there's a very long period of probably an hour between there's like yeah. two up front two gore melts yeah. and then there's a, a then we get series of rapid uh you know in rapid succession there's like four or five toward the end yeah. yeah, and so then the movie's the, picking back up again on the on the gore melting quotient because yeah. the Ed, the liquor store owner, uh, Wheezy, well, Wheezy, again, which is, is like one of those morally compromised things where like the guy knows that the what liquor it'll causes do. it right yeah. after the other dude explodes. Yeah, and this guy like blows up and yeah. explodes like the Monty it's like, Python fuck that gag. Guy. I'm yeah. make him drink it. Yeah, and so he's going to, yeah. I want to kill. I want to kill this guy who's been a pain in my ass the yeah. entire thing by that feeding him this stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. That's what fucks me up about that. It's like the fuck. All this guy won't want. He's trying to get revenge on him for just stealing money. Yeah. Ah, what a dick. Yeah. So right. That, it, that he like, owed to Bronson. Yeah. It's like I guess the only character you're supposed to latch onto is like the younger bum kid, but he's barely. In the, all he wants to yeah. do is fuck the Asian secretary. That's all he wants. She to almost do does, yeah. which is. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh my god. Oh. oh yeah. This Asian lady loves dirt dick. It's crazy she when she's like. Yes, I'll fuck you. You're a little bum. I mean, and, and she and doesn't take a shower. She's just, just a like, shower. Let's just no, do this right and now. If you <laughs> eagle-eyed viewers will notice that <laughs> when she takes him into the office and she's kissing his stomach, oh, and yeah. then they get interrupted later on. If you see the young boy running around, you notice the the there's small circle. Spot. There's a clean spot on his stomach where she was kissing, and it's <laughs> oh, that, could that might be the grossest thing. It might thing. be an accident, but it's funny. Still. If, no, uh, come on, like whoever. No, did I don't think that. these guys are that genius. Uh, it's, it, come on, that it was right there. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, almost. Yeah. It's did too you say perfect. Brian? Did you say Brian Singer worked on this? No, he as a production yeah, assistant. Yeah, it, was, it, was yeah. it was him. <laughs> yeah, probably. That kid's going somewhere. Yes. Good job, Ryan. I have to find out what happened to that boy. <laughs> now yeah. I'm worried. Yeah. I, just, I, want, I want to know what substance they put on him, like I as just, dirt. I don't because dirt she, just grease. Yeah, no, because no, because she, dirt. she really kissed his stomach. Uh, like what? Well, but that was I'm hoping. Clean. I'm hoping it was cocoa powder. I don't know. Sure. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's it was weird anyway, because this Asian chick looks like she's like in her mid thirties. I don't know. I had to dress up a bum once. We squirted ketchup and coffee grounds on him. It was pretty nasty. Gross. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was yeah. not good. So yeah, I mean, yeah. What I mean? Yeah, because what's the wrap up to this? I movie mean, they, I like, mean, the last five minutes turn into a horror movie where Bronson stalks the young kid around the. <laughs> but the, truly, the real the real ending was after the title popped up and they were back in the office. The the gangster now and the, that's, the doorman. The doorman. <laughs> right, the doorman who had to be an up-and-coming comedian. What? Yeah. Because, and he's got well, that he delivery. He's on Titus. He was on yeah, Titus. Yeah, he's done a lot of, right. like, yeah, yeah. but yeah. never, it's like, like, his character in this is the doorman and I yes. think, like, we looked up, like, his, one of his most recent credits was, like, Detective Bridge Number Two or something like that. Yeah, in Bridge of Spies. Right. Detective Number so Two. So he's got the background stuff. But he's got... The reason he's so funny to me is because he's got this delivery that never gets excited. It's, a soft word. it's yeah. just yeah. kind of just even it's the entire New way, York. no matter how ridiculous yeah. it gets. He talks like, hey, fast, dude. That's the key to acting. Yeah. He's talking fast. It sounds like you know what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it yeah. Like you're talking off the cup of. Uh, but he yes. never even seems to really get flustered, even when the no, guy's like, "See this cane? I'm going to take this cane. I'm going to shove it down your throat, and it's going to come out your ass." Well, you misunderstood. Let me let me let me kiss your ring. Like I kiss your ring, and then we'll be all right. And I love you. You're just straight. Just don't do it. Uh, now, what you're calling me, Nick the Dick? I don't know what you're talking about. I never heard that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said, he's, he's like, like what is that? <laughs> yeah. You said my girlfriend sm- stinks. Yeah, I mean, she stinks. Uh, beauty. She yeah. 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 Beauty. That's, that's all I was trying to say. And it's just, I, you know, but how does it wrap up the oh, story it. of, like, I mean, because the initial the thing is the. It takes us to the song. Or the right. Well, the Bronson event. dies. But like, the initial event is, well, I suppose it is, like, right? The initial event yeah. is they steal money for Bronson, and so he eventually, you got to kill Bronson. Right. So because he's the antagonist, they take his head off with a nitrogen container or whatever. Right, they, they knock the, the top off, and it goes right into him. And, and it ends with a beautiful shot, which I didn't expect from this movie. I didn't think they were, the it was possible. The decapitation, but yeah. then it shows the body decapitated and the head falling right perfectly in yeah, the middle yeah. in the that's background. That's like that's that was beautiful. Feel, beautiful. It was beautiful. I feel like we should we would have seen that like hit it, right? Like it feels like it was cut. Cause I mean 
Unless they did decide to just stick the camera there and just throw the fuck ahead in the back, yeah, which it could have been. Blew off, and that was it coming back. Right. But whatever, it was beautiful. It seems yeah. like, I don't know. It might not have been intentional, that. but it was good. But the head, Tommy the remote wolf, control, wolf pretty <laughs> decent looking head, gets yeah. to move its eyes around it, and the Asian girl oh, jumps God. over it. Oh, and you Lord. get the impression that he's looking up her skirt. This he is was. a yeah. Oh, yeah, he was. And he smiled. Looking up her skirt and smiling. He smiled at the end. That's how you do it. That's how you end it. That's, That's just it. Classic. And then the Asian girl runs over to the little boy and then street trash. Yeah. But there is <laughs> oh God, clean, there is no closure to the whole like no. uh, the where the Viper no. the wine comes from or that the liquor store it's is going to burn down. No one else That's will it? be a- affected by it. No. no, it's a fucking barely a movie we just watched. All right. So I guess uh, anything else to say about street trash before we. Summon Igor the Beast to bring us our mail. I think that's yeah, it. I, I think, think that was it. Your treasure's over. Let's get some mail in here. All right. Well, Igor, where are you, sir? Bring us our mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. All right. I got a couple paragraphs. Thank you, you Igor. Heard his singing voice. Is that good? Is it good? Because he can't he can't speak too you, well. You like, is he a soprano? So. I I picture him as a soprano. Uh, see, I'm not positive. Is he more baritone? Does he sound like Pavarotti? Like, because that would be great. I he's an I, opera singer, or does he do like show? I don't want to say. He, right. he, if he, oh. he'll, he'll let you know. He's very he's quiet about it. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's something that me. will reveal it's itself not later for me, on. Though. That's his personal Wait, business. why did he sing for you? Uh, that's oh, what I was going to ask. Again. Like, you're hearing him in the shower or something? Like, do you know him? Do you guys hang out outside of this podcast? Shit. I almost did a spit take, Jesus. <laughs> All right, well, we have a couple of, uh, uh, yeah, again, if you want to write to us, we're on Twitter, we're at Sat Freak Show. You can also get a hold of us uh, on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or email us at Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com and we'll read your comments like we're going to do here. Uh, Bobette Georgie writes Bobette. in. Bobette. About, all these are about the Monster Squad. Um Bobette says, I think that most of the early monsters in movies, especially the Universal Monsters, were rooted in human reality from grave robbing medical need ghouls to drinkers of blood for Luciferian ritual or the Fountain of Youth to mad scientists with generally crazy ideas to derange or mentally disturbed man wolves or those suffering from porphyria. These are all reality based with a supernatural bent led by Hollywood. This is because we watched the Monster Squad where they went mm-hmm. back and did all the, you know, universal. Uh, I wouldn't even say bent by Hollywood. This is bent by history. They used to think if you were a criminal and you died, that's what made you a vampire. Just being yeah. an evil person made yeah. you so, so evil that you would live on after your mm-hmm. death. Yeah, superstition, I think, like generally, you know, mm-hmm. what? they uh, Porphyria, or, there'd be people who they dig up their bodies later and they'd uh, have like, you know, blood on their lips. So it was like, well, that person, how'd they get blood on their lips? They must have actually got out of the grave and gone right. and, you mm-hmm. know, bit people. But it was actually like a natural sure. thing from disease. Also, Bobette Georgie points out that? that the singer of both of the Monster Squad songs. So we had Rock Until You Drop and the whatever Monster Squad rap at the end was <laughs> Michael Sambello, who was the guy who did Maniac from Flashdance. Shut up. She's a maniac, maniac, maniac. That's for sure. Yeah. Crazy. And I'm shocked. <laughs> uh, G Money writes in and says, G Money, love the Monster Squad and Castle Freak episodes hey. as I grew up with both of those films. Growing up in Hollywood, I remember seeing the Castle Freak poster outside a theater they used to show Full Moon movies at. Cool. That oh, and nice. the dreaded or the dreadful. Head of the Family posters have always stuck with me. Head Monster Squad is one of those movies I always loved, and anyone who saw it as a youth probably carries that nostalgia with them wherever the film is brought up. Same as if you see Explorers or non-anime Guyver as an adult, you probably won't see them as classics. And also, thanks for making it known that Travis has a problem with every horror movie aside from his own. <laughs> Although I agree with almost everything he says. It's yeah. pretty- oh, very, very passive aggressive. <laughs> he did not uh, need that validation. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like we were all like, yeah, and they're like, oh, oh yeah. man, <laughs> passive aggressive. So, uh, and Douglas Wayne writes about. Um, all right, so I don't know if we brought it up on our Monster Squad episode, but Jonathan Grise, who plays the Wolfman, 
also played the werewolf in Fright Night Part 2. Yeah, oh. I think you, you posted a lot, yeah. On yeah, the there was a, yeah, so he played a werewolf twice within like four years of Bravo. each other or whatever. Awesome. And uh, Douglas Wayne writes in and said he also wouldn't give, give back Kramer's Tupperware on Seinfeld. Oh my God, that is him. <gasps> <gasps> okay. There you go. All right. Seinfeld. So thank you <laughs> folks for writing in. <laughs> thank you. And now. Awesome. Uh-oh. It's time for wrap up, so that means you oh, hear that man. sound. The bell tolls for who? The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. <laughs> Lurk. <laughs> Those <are> eyes. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go around the room, do wrap ups on street trash. And we're going to start with Travis. A rose by any other name. <laughs> uh, fuck this movie. <laughs> no, I just, I don't know. I'm always saying, like, okay, I've been watching horror movies now for a good, like, like 23 years, give or take. And it's like, why haven't I seen this? I always say, oh, my God, I've always wanted to see that. It's always been the kind of the thing in the back of my mind. Oh, why haven't I seen that? Then I watch it. I'm like. Oh, that's why it's because I was waiting. It's like I'm gonna wait till I scrape the bottom of the barrel, right? That's why I still haven't seen Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge. Like, I still haven't seen a few <laughs> things out there. This year's been, I swear to God, one of those years. I, Madman, all these weird movies I never wanted to see. And it's like, oh, I had pretty good instincts. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I hate street trash. This movie, I love some trauma movies, man, but this doesn't even have a story you can even latch on to. It doesn't even have those nuggets of ideas or it just has nothing. It's got like two or three bomb melting scenes. You get to see some full bush. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like other than that, it's just like pro fuck, man pro, but, but that's it. You can, you can list three pros. <laughs> and so like, yeah, I fucking, yeah, dude, I, ugh. I can't believe all the movies I would put ahead of this movie. Um, just, yeah, dude, I do not recommend Street Trash. Well, nice. all right. Um, I don't know. I'm like, uh, I'm not going to say I'm torn on this movie because overall, I'm going to lead with the, you know, the, I'm not going to bury the lead. I didn't really like it. However, I am aware that I think this is an original movie. Like, Whoa. I was sitting there going, yeah, because... Because it was confounding my expectations so many, you know, so often, it was like, am I resisting this movie because it's not doing what I want it to do? Because I guess I was trying to figure out what it was trying to do. So it was like engaging me in a way that, like, I'm not sure if this is just amateurish sloppiness or if there's actually like a point here that we're getting at, which I guess I still haven't at this point uncovered what it is. But I mean, like, you know, by the time the fucking uh, the mob guy's song kicks in during the end credits, I'm like, I have never fucking seen a movie like this in my life. You know, and it's saying so. It does kind of have, but again, like I said, I didn't like the experience. <laughs> I was going to see Slime City <laughs> <laughs> because I think there's something about this particular brand of New York cinema, which also covers the trauma thing. I mean, I've told you I'm not a fan of trauma and I think that it bleeds over into this. It kind of feels the same way. There's something about the, uh, it's not like the amateurish quality. I mean, it is the amateurish quality of the acting or the direction, which, you know, I think, it starts like, out with a fart joke. You've got a well, that's the writing, right, or whatever. But I mean, you, you've got you've got the steady cam, and you're doing all this stuff with the camera. But I was still spatially unaware a lot, a lot of times. You know, I mean, I'm just thinking, for instance, of the scene with the uh, <clears throat> at the the rest the Italian restaurant where the bum walks by, and then there's this guy in the white chef suit, like out having a cigarette, and I'm like, what is he looking at? Is he looking at these people going by or there's the doorman? It's like I couldn't place spatially where they really were in relation to themselves other than that they were following the 180 degree rule. And it was like he was looking off left and they were going left. So, you know, he must have been following, you know, where Mm -hmm. they were going. But so I think like the, the, the staging from the directorial angle was like it was clearly a very a first movie. But um 
And I guess because the movie wasn't what I expected it to be, I mean, you know, I came into it going like, it's going to be a movie about melting bombs, <laughs> and that it wasn't. So I think I have to, I don't, I'm not saying I'm ever going to watch it again, but I think I have to try and like reevaluate it under the guise of like, what, okay, that was what I wanted. That clearly wasn't what they were trying to do. So like, what were they trying to do? And, you know, see it under, you know, f- through that lens. But, um, I just didn't like the experience because I think all the characters are so just repugnant, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, as Travis said, it's trying to be like this kind of punk, you know, rebel thing where we're just going to, and the guy, you know, Frumkus has said that I'm setting out to offend everybody because that's going to get me attention and that's going to make the movie a cult, you know, thing. And obviously it worked in his get behalf, more work but from it. it's, it's also thing. just like, it's really uh, just ugly in a lot of ways. I mean, not... No, you're right. <laughs> it's ugly, but it's not ugly in like a, you know, like a, a Last House on the Left level or something mm-hmm. like that. Maybe because those movies feel more realistic, and so that makes them kind of more dangerous in my mind than this, which is like, it's a fuck... It, it is a cartoon, you yeah. know? I mean, Neon it's very... colored melting people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, the characters are very broad, and, you know, like, this is the Jewish store owner, and this is the crazy bum, and this is the crazy... Dude, it's like take you know? Tom and Jerry hitting each other with hammers and just fucking blow that up to yeah. the, you know... Would this adult make... Adult X-rated level. <laughs> yeah. Would, I, would it make a good party movie to have on in the background? It's possible. I don't know, because you no. catch little bits and pieces of it and go, what the fuck is that? There are now grown men throwing a penis around in the country, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's this guy melting that's on a toilet my, uh, and flushing himself down the toilet, and his hand detaches as he's melting. I mean, like, all was, of this was stuff. Was there working plumbing in that? Yeah, in right. That? <laughs> that's what I was thinking at the time. Like, uh, he's yeah, in, like, that, this blown out. half demolished yeah. building, yeah. <laughs> so I guess, you know, even though I'm talking it up as, like, you know, you'll know if you would appreciate this, but personally, I just didn't like the experience of street trash, uh, so I would pass. I would not recommend it. Mm. Yeah, you said it very eloquently about being original, but I I don't think you can call a clusterfuck original. Like it's just a hodgepodge. Um, Throw shit at the wall. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's see like it it's like let's take every single idea we have and throw it in and see if it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's already in. Done. Yeah, no I, dirty priest. It was Where just... was the dirty priest? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was a guy. The guy in the car. And the part where um where he like fell on the car, I thought that was a priest at first, oh. and I was like, seriously, we're hitting everything. But <laughs> he was just wearing a windbreaker, so no big deal. But yeah, I uh, although I do have to point out, you mentioned um, bush and boobs. There is full frontal male nudity as well, guys. If, you, if that's I mean, your thing, that I, if that's your thing, <laughs> it's just it seemed like it. I I don't if know. If you want that on your checklist, it's there. Um. Did you say that was yeah. in the opening, like, five it minutes? It was in the Sorry. opening yeah, scene, yeah. In, the, in those opening credits, which yeah, is determined in, to give you... Yeah, I'm not right. talking about they the... They knew uh, how to draw you in. They just couldn't, like, deliver the rest I'm not of talking it. about the penis hot potato. I'm talking about the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I thought this movie was just awful. It, it, it was... It was nothing that I expected. I really was excited when I was like, oh, melting bums. Yes, this could be great. Nope, nothing. Sometimes your expectations need to be met. Sometimes they just need to be met. This was that case. I, it was a clusterfuck. It was absolutely a cluster. If I could put a quote on the poster of this movie, it would be the oil rig sound. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that that's would legit. be. Can we add that segment to the show? Like, all right, that's what's your legit. tagline? Your made-up tagline for this movie after we've yeah. watched it? That'd be good. <laughs> Like, normally when we watch a movie, we're all joking and laughing. We were dead silent for a good hour, 15 minutes of this movie. Mm-hmm. I was like, trying to think of jokes, too. It's like, what can I... I right, know. right, we're going to say... I, hear. I, was yeah. something. I was just like, I'm done watching this. I want to turn this off. If I was home alone, I would be like, fuck this. I'm like going to listen to radio or something. I'm going to draw. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you wouldn't rather be coloring? We could be coloring, yeah. We could be coloring. If I... If, you... If I, trace it. Like if, I here, if I wasn't here with you guys, I would not remember one thing I liked about this movie. I would just have tried to forgotten it and moved on. This is what I'm curious about the then. Like the uh, in yeah. the you know, in the weeks to come, is this gonna be one that we refer back to as like, you know, this is just one that's like sticking in the I don't know. We'll find out. I don't, I don't know. know. We'll have to come back and revisit. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot this off. 
But uh, <laughs> yeah, until then, I can't recommend it. I know, right? I'm just, I'm just letting the, letting the air breathe. Um, so good. It's, it is, a, it's a hard one. I think, uh, I mean, Colin nailed it when he said, like the, uh, and I'm trying to think back now that you mentioned it, it's like, did I enjoy the experience? And Holly was right. For the good hour in the middle there, we were all just silent, watching what was going on on the screen, and that part was not enjoyable. Like, there's some stuff where it's just like, ugh, kind of made me cringe a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, there are scenes that I do like. When it's stuck with the melting bums drink alcohol and melt, yeah. I'm I'm in. <laughs> Two thumbs like, up. Like, I love yes. that. Give me more of that. The whole, the hour in the middle with the, uh, you know, with Bronson and the the, the, raping. the, the raping and everything. I'm just like, uh, it's, just, it's it really just, yeah, it's not enjoyable to watch that. Um, I mean, I want more neon melting and everything. Um, yes. It's, but it's also hard because I want to watch, I'm going to go through and watch every special feature on this Blu-ray to figure it to just to see, I want to see the making of this. I want to know what they were thinking. Like I'm going to run down the list of everything on this and just watch it. But eh, it doesn't have enough good parts that come together because it's disconnected this movie, um, there's not – the story is haphazard and just all over the place. There's not enough to combine to uh, recommend this movie, I don't mm-hmm. think. I mean, take your chances with this one. Uh, there are certain parts that are enjoyable, but as a whole – you can probably find those on YouTube. I mean, I think you could. I think, I think you could. But again, this goes under the... That might be the short that our, it's based on. Uh, that, I mean, but maybe the short is like, that's, that's maybe. you should have stuck with that. Maybe that maybe. was just all melting bums. Watch the short and let find us know. Out. Yeah. I will find out. Um, but I will, yeah, but I, I don't think I can recommend it to... Well, you guys said that it's it's a cult classic. I'm anxious if any of our listeners consider this a cult classic. Or I want to hear. I want to hear why. They just put that on boxes, so you'll be like, "Ooh, cult classic." No, Let's but try no, it. but Let's you've it. you've heard of it. I know you've heard of it. Your friend loves it. Mm-hmm. I if anyone likes, I want to hear why. I really do. Well, see, I'm curious because even if Sean's sitting there saying like, you know, it's like I want to see the extra features and understand why they were doing. It. I'm like, you're going down the road to like. You ever had those movies that the first time you watch them, you hate yeah. the fucking thing? I mean, maybe. You're and fall- then somehow yeah. you come around to like the other side, and you're like, "I used to, I, I did not like that movie when I first saw it, and now I'm like, I can't, yeah, it's, like, I can't the turn of, away from it." Right, you know, it's a possibility. You're at the beginning of the rabbit hole. That's how that <laughs> shit happens, though. I think you watch it and you go like, you know, I didn't like that. Why didn't I like that? I gotta find out why I didn't like that. I gotta watch all this stuff about it, and then you're like, you know, crazy Colin's amounts of stuff about it. Personal oh yeah, I've done that with movies. Oh yeah, yeah. There's been stuff. I mean, like I know I keep going back to Dario Argento's Inferno. Mm. That's a movie that infuriates you, like on first watch. Yeah, that is like, <clears throat> it's two three times. <laughs> it, right there. I've seen it two or but three times. But you don't watch a movie again that you hate. It's that fourth time that's no, going to get it's you. Only, but it's only because Argento fucks with you with Suspiria, right? You're like the Three Mothers trilogy, the or whatever the fuck. So then you're like, well, I gotta see Inferno. I right. gotta see Mother of Tears. Yeah. And you're like, well, this sucked, and this one sucked. Like, oh, I will never <laughs> try to watch Mother of Tears again. I just tried to do Inferno. I, and never, I've done Mother of like, Tears as an again. adult. I saw Inferno. I liked as a child. it better the second time. Oh fuck you! <laughs> yeah, see, this is what happens. <laughs> So just we'll, like Argento. We'll have to come back to no, like legitimately there were things that the first time you're like watching them as a movie it. and there's all of these like things that you expect from a movie and they're yeah. the fact that they're violating the rules, yeah. you hate it. And later on in life, or you know, five years from now, you're like, you know, I remember this movie called Street Trash. And it no, stands no. out because it violated those rules. It's the one movie that like just said, I'm gonna fucking, you know. Not uh, adhere to logic in this so, you know, situation. Troll did it better. So next, well, that's week. why I'm like because you like trauma movies. I'm surprised that like if you would have seen this when you were younger, no, I wonder has stories or at least at least my favorites, Toxic Avenger, Nuke of High. Those have stories. Those have characters. They have story beats. You can follow it. It's easy. Okay, so next week we got to check back in with Sean and see if he's fallen down We're the rabbit hole. We're going to have to give him like a year. <laughs> I mean, this is like a comeback in a year. I mean, like, yeah, give me some time. Like <laughs> trash now. Yeah, because initially you go like, I hate it, I hate it, I hate Although it. Although, I, yeah, I, I I, mean, I'll watch everything because i got to give this back to my buddy. But, right. uh, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to marinate. 
in there a little bit. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Just uh, wash Well, I bet there. when you get home and get free time, you're like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just like, so much time to myself. <laughs> I'm sure you should watch Homeland or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go back to the People vs. O.J. Simpson. There, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All, right. All right, so that's Street Trash for the Saturday Night Freak Show. Next week, we're watching Holly's Pick. Yes! What are we watching? I got a treat for you guys. We're watching a little mockumentary called What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, All right. that sounds very fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Vampires. Vampires. From the director of Thor Ragnarok. True. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I'm, that makes me worried for Thor Ragnarok. It's like they want more comedy. What really, did they do? They did uh, Flight of the Flight Conquerors. Of Conquerors. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's next week on the yes. Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the bass.